And I think it's super important to keep reminding yourself of why you got into it in the first place. What's going on? You're listening to episode 26 of the Perspective Podcast, and I'm your host, Scotty Russell of Perspective Collective. This show is all about encouraging you to pursue your creativity. Whether you're like me and you work a day job, or maybe you just feel like you don't have the time, well, the mission of this show is to convince you to make time to scratch that creative itch because you never know who you could impact when you start sharing your work. I know this show has been more of a monologue and me just by myself talking to you one-on-one, it's the perspective podcast for a reason to see that there's multiple ways of doing things. There's multiple ways of viewing things and everybody's opinion could be different. And that's why I want to start going into the interview format here and there. You know, it's still going to mostly be the, the monologue, but I believe I have a lot of friends in the creative community who have great insight that they can help you share that maybe I can't relay that or articulate that to you. I'm so stoked to have my first interview with one of my good friends. His name's Eric Friedenson. He's also known as F. Dot. He is a talented hand lettering artist and designer based out of Brooklyn, New York. He's worked with the likes of Pat Flynn and has taught lettering workshops for Vayner Media. He also works at WeWork right now, and he is the creator of the Optimist Project. Uh, he's big into skateboarding and traveling, and it's just an absolute honor to have him as the first guest of my show. He's a great friend of mine. He definitely keeps me in check, uh, make sure that I'm always seeing things from a different perspective as the show goes. So he keeps me honest and keeps me humble. And I am ecstatic for him to share three ways of how he stays inspired to create with his personal work. So let's get into the show. All right, dude, what's going on, Eric? How have you been? Pretty good, man. Thanks for having me on your podcast. I'm super excited. Yeah, it's it's awesome to have you as the first guest. I'm pretty stoked too, not going to lie. A, a little bit nervous because I've never done this before, but I'm glad it's with a good friend that I know is ready to deliver some value and you know share a little bit about some of the things he deals with as a, a creative every day too. So. Sounds good, man. Where do you want to start? All right. Well, the topic today that you and I had talked about is three ways to stay inspired to create your personal work. And I want to get started first off with like, why would someone feel uninspired to create in the first place? And you and I have both read the book, The War of Art by Stephen Pressfield. I'm a big fan. I think you are too. But in this book, the whole concept and theory behind it is the resistance, And that's why many of us feel uninspired to create in the first place is due to this, as he would say in the book, this universal force that has one sole mission, and that's to keep things as they are. And he goes in a little bit further and says that the resistance is this force that will stop an individual's creative activity any means necessary, whether it's through whether it be rationalizing, inspiring fear and anxiety, presenting distractions or raising the voice of the inner critic in Um, It will use any tool to stop creation flowing from an individual, no matter what the field of creation is. And Stephen Pressfield goes in a little bit more in detail of the best way to fight the resistance is to simply do your work. And you and I both know the concept of becoming a pro, you know, going from someone who's an amateur and hobbyist to being a professional. And the best way to do your work is by becoming a pro, not making excuses and Stop using the excuse of not having motivation because motivation comes from the act of doing. So now that I kind of give a a background of the resistance and also if someone's interested in this book, I'm going to link it up in the show notes. It's going to be perspective-collective.com forward slash 26. So Eric, what's your take on the resistance and some things that restrain you from feeling inspired to create your personal work? Kind of a a two-part question. Sure. So you mentioned that Pressfield says the best way to get past this resistance is to just do your work. And it sounds so simple. You just, you just refuse to give into that resistance and all the other distractions and you just do your work. But in reality, it's not always that simple. Um, I've totally been there where you have all of these different things that you want to do and it just feels a little bit overwhelming. And you know, everywhere you look, there's endless things to consume. And the worst part is they're designed to be addicting. Uh, so 
I, for me, that's the biggest resistance. You know, when I give myself too much free time, I end up filling it with those distractions that I don't really want to be doing in the long run. Mm -hmm. Um, when I fall behind on sleep, uh, I usually don't make good decisions when I have zero structure or routines, you know, in that same vein, uh, I need to have some kind of repeating structure so that I can break outside of that box. And, you know, you know, they say you have to learn the rules before you can break them. I think that applies to this too. Mm Mm-hmm. Uh, when I say yes to too many things on, you know, on the opposite end of having too much free time, when I have no free time, obviously I'm not going to be able to create because I'm filling it with unimportant tasks or social obligations that I don't really care about. Uh, I think it's good to have some social, uh, social life, but it can, it can take over your life when you're saying yes to every, you know, every person that wants to hang out with you or get coffee. Um, when I have some drama or chaos in my life right now, we're going through this crazy time in the world and it's very distracting. It just seems like you, you don't really have much power at all and your create, your creativity isn't making any difference, but it's, it's easy to go down that spiral and realize, um, that you're just not making any progress. And if you're not making any progress, you're definitely making yourself even more powerless to that resistance. And then the last one here is, uh, the reason I don't create is because I'm focusing on what other people are doing instead of what I'm doing and why I got into making art in the first place. And I think it's super important to keep reminding yourself of why you got into it in the first place. Yeah, I, I, I would say I deal with a lot of those myself. And one of the main things for me was over committing and saying yes to too many things. So that's definitely something I've been focusing on. So uh, I think that's a great overview of what many people would probably agree to as well. Maybe they're aware or not aware of these situations. So hopefully this kind of, you know, makes someone aware of the things that they're struggling with too, moving forward to stay inspired. Moving on, I want to talk about, we talked about three ways that you're going to stay inspired. The first one that we'll talk about first is vary your intake. The second one is about being around other creatives. And the third is more about recharging. So getting into the first one of vary your intake on how you stay inspired. Can you give me a little bit more background of what this means Sure. Yeah. So it's almost like a diet, right? You're, you're intaking things visually, um, through audio, through video, through your eyes. And if you're always intaking the same stuff, uh, it's going to end, you're going to end up outputting the same stuff too. And I think with art, you know, you end up following a lot of artists that do similar work to you. For me, one of my specialties is lettering. So I follow a lot of lettering artists, but if you're only following lettering artists and especially the ones that are Um, making popular work, you end up tending to those trends and your work just gets lost in the crowd. So I always recommend that people follow different types of artists, different types of designers, for example, like musicians and product designers and um, all different kinds, whatever you're into, I guess. You know, it helps to look at your roots too and say, okay, well, I used to be really into skateboarding when I was a kid. I I still am. But, you know, I, I try to not only follow artists, but I follow skateboard photographers and, um, you know, all different kinds of brands that, that can inspire my work. And then in addition to following them online, you can even look in further because some of these artists you look up to have written books or they have their own blogs and podcasts. And it's, it's much you can go much deeper and learn how these people actually think, especially the artists that are no longer with us. I, I have a few books that are from artists that are deceased, and I just feel like everything that's happening right now is, is being recycled from all of these old artists in new ways and remixed. And when you go really far back, you can actually get to the root of the inspiration or closer to the root of the inspiration. So do you have an example of maybe somebody's work you really like that's outside of lettering that maybe you have a book or uh, some kind of podcast or something? Yeah. One book I bought recently was an illustrator, it was a Japanese illustrator named Shigeo Fukuda. It's like an, almost like an op art style where, um, you know, optical illusions and he, he uses really simple line work in his illustrations, but he can tell stories and almost make you double take as you're looking at his illustrations. And I just think that's something I was always drawn to since I was a kid. Uh, so I, I decided to buy his, his book of his masterworks and I've just been really enjoying keeping it on my coffee table and picking it up whenever I, whenever I feel like I need some inspiration. Have you found yourself kind of taking some of that style and injecting it into your lettering or illustrations, or is it just more kind of clear your head and, you know, get some new ideas cooking? It's funny you say that because when I look at it, I find something I really like. I'm like, oh, I want to do something like that. 
And then I, I usually don't act on that impulse because it seems a little bit too derivative to just take something that someone made and make my own version of it. I mean, it could be a tribute and I've actually done that before. Um, I did that with a different artist, you know, last year, a couple, a couple times made a tribute. Um, but I found that letting it sort of percolate in my head and, and come up naturally versus just immediately going, Oh, I like this piece. I want to make something exactly like it. But you know, you can take two different things. Let's say I have two books or something that I heard, uh, last week on a podcast and combine that with an idea that I found in this book. And then that is almost like a remix and you're combining two things. There's a really great documentary on YouTube called everything's a remix. And it's in the, in the same vein of steel, like an artist, that book by Austin Kleon. Mm -hmm. Um, those are two resources, resources about this topic. I would definitely recommend. Nice. I, I would agree. I found I was getting really stagnant. Like I, I became obsessed with hand lettering a few years back and all I would do is just follow hand lettering artists, just curating my feet of solely that style. And next thing you know, my work was becoming stagnant. It was becoming super boring and just repetitive and regurgitating what I'm seeing out in other people's work. And, you know, unbeknownst to me, I started following more illustrators or, you know, more calligraphers, stuff that I would never do before. Even like fantasy art influenced me of getting back to my roots where I'm mixing in my illustrations with the lettering. So I believe varying my intake or like even being inspired by photography accounts, you know, all that stuff has really influenced a new direction in my art as well. So I would definitely say varying your intake is high up on the list of how to stay inspired to create for your personal work. Moving on to the second topic would be being around other creatives will help you stay inspired. The first thing we have mentioned right here is getting around a community. What, when you get involved in community, how does that help you or how do you go about searching or seeking out these kind of people to be around? Well, first you're already following these people online and I think just engaging with them beyond liking their photo, you know, leave them like a thoughtful comment, send them a message because the internet makes it so easy to, to reach out to these other artists. I think I'd say like you're, you're already following them and that's where you should start. Uh, if you hear about an event coming up where you can actually meet face to face, that's even better. I know you and I are going to be going to creative South in a couple months and I'm super stoked for that. Yeah. It's, it's, it's going to be my third year in a row. That's where and we met for the yeah. first time. Yeah. So I, re I recommend going to creative conferences if you can afford it. Um, uh, if not local meetups, you know, uh, and if, if you're, if there's no local meetups, why not start one? Mm -hmm. And like, like we were talking about before, it's really, it seems so simple to just do your work, but it becomes a lot easier when you're around other people that are disciplined in their creativity and they're doing their work. If you're hanging around people that are just consuming, you're going to be more likely to just consume. And, you know, I'm not going to tell you that you have to lose friends, but it seems like the more you find things that you love, the, you know, the more you're going to want to find friends with those same interests. It's not like everybody needs to be doing the same thing as you. And I think that's, that, that could actually be negative if everybody is doing exactly what you want to do. But if, if you're around other creative people who do different types of things, it's going to have a huge effect on your work. Well, and something you and I both are believers in is yes, getting around the same people who are doing the work you wish to do or aspire to do or are currently doing, but even the fact of when you find some people, you know, form an uh, accountability group in this community or form some type of mastermind when you really get a, a like-minded creatives together who are doing some big things. So I, I believe that would be part of the community of being around the other creatives too. So just to make sure you're around these people every day and getting the feedback and being able to bounce ideas off someone. I mean, one, one more thing on that, you know, we all have friends out there who we try to stay in touch with and it, it doesn't really feel like a two-way street. You know, you're, you're reaching out to them every once in a while and saying, hey, we should catch up, and then nothing ever happens. So what Scotty was just talking about there was, what you were just talking about there was um, getting something on the calendar. So you have a repeating sort of meeting with people. Why don't you get coffee with that person every month or, you know, have a Skype call once a week with your friends that are also in this for, for the long term and, you know, they share your values. And it'll take a little time to get to there. I think, I think that's like the next stage of community is when you actually have something like an accountability group or a mastermind group. But, um, you know, just start, just getting started is, you know, so important reaching out to those people around you. Yeah. It just starts with taking initiative. You know, if you really want to be serious about your creativity, it, it starts with 
you know, reaching out for people. I'm in the middle of Iowa. You are full of, you're, you're around tons of creatives in the Brooklyn, New York area and Iowa, not so much. So it's like, I have to take the initiative and create local drink and draw groups or, you know, go out of state to conferences to get around people like you. I wouldn't have met any of, you know, the people I I'm friends with and connect with daily now, if I wouldn't have taken initiative. Moving on from community, another way to be around creatives and to, you know, explore different ideas is through collaboration. I know you've done a lot of collaboration pieces in the past. So if you could tell me a little bit how collaboration helps you stay inspired as well as maybe a project or two that you've recently collaborated on within the last year or so. Yeah, sure. Yeah. Collaboration is really important to me. Whenever I just, when I'm, I'm, I'm a very extroverted person and if I, if I end up spending too much time working in a vacuum, I kind of go crazy. So, uh, not only at my job, I, I like to collaborate with my, my teammates, but outside of my job, I'm always looking for, for different people that I can collaborate with. Um, just for fun, not necessarily to make money on it. One good example of that was uh, back in 2015 and, and 2014, I was working at this agency uh, and they happened to have a big chalkboard wall just in the office that was going unused. And I just thought to myself, why isn't my art there? <laughs> and I, I said, okay, well, this is a pretty big wall, so maybe I can get some help with it. I hit up a couple of friends and then every month or so, I was redoing that chalkboard wall with a big lettering mural. And that's really what got me into murals, and it was very unexpected um, that I found, you know, the impact of making murals through this cl- these collaborations. And it, they're still in my portfolio today. I can't really recommend that enough. Just like trying new mediums and and collaborating with with artists you admire, it's a little difficult because you, you don't want to reach out to somebody who's way ahead of you because they, you know, they probably won't be able to. They won't won't be interested in collaborating. But it, it's never it never hurts to try. And, you know, if you reach out to 10 people, 20 people, and one of them says I'm down, then that's a success. Didn't you, uh, was it Indonesia or India? You, you flew overseas and did a large outside mural collaboration too. Yeah, that was just at the end of 2015. Uh, I was going to India for a friend's wedding and I figured why not, you know, extend my trip a little bit. It's a long flight. And I reached out to a bunch of artists and designers online, and one of them was down to collaborate on a mural. And it all came, it all came together really quickly, but um, another really fun story. So I think whenever you can hit two birds with one stone, as long as you're not, you know, because I didn't, I didn't want to try to do a whole massive project because then I would be, that wouldn't be very nice for my friend who was getting married. <laughs> yeah. So I made sure that I wasn't overcommitting, uh, but I definitely wanted to, use my time there and, and meet, you know, artists and designers. I don't know, maybe not everybody else is so drawn to community, but whenever I'm traveling, I want to meet the artists of that region, Definitely. right? I mean, why not? Definitely. No, I, I think that's great. I think you are a prime example of, you know, what being around other creatives in the community and collaboration is all about and how it's definitely inspired some of your bigger projects that I feel like you would want to promote and share the kind of work you want to do more of. The third way that you stay inspired to create for your personal projects is through recharging by different activities, which could be a change of environment or being active. So if you want to talk a little bit about how changing your environment keeps you inspired, I I think people would love to hear a little bit more about that. Yeah, sure. So before we mentioned about having a routine, and I think it's good to have some routine, but for me... When I'm, ha- when I'm doing the same thing every day in the same places at the same times, it can get really boring and I get really burnt out. So one thing I like to do is just to get outside, um, whether that's actually outside, outdoors in a park and bring my sketchbook with me, or just go to a cafe or a co-working space, just do something different. Even if it's just rearranging your furniture in your apartment or your, your, your office, whatever you can do to bring in some new inspiration. And you'll be surprised that your your headspace might totally change just from going to a cafe and being around just other people. Because if you're working at home alone, like me sometimes, uh, it, it can definitely feel a little bit secluded. Some people love it, but it, for me, it gets old really fast. Yeah, I would, I would definitely say uh, I am kind of the hermit style. I get stuck in my office, but you 
have a great initiative of one of your side projects of summer of sketching where you kind of encourage people to do a change of environment. And I think that's awesome. If you haven't heard of summer of sketching, I believe it's summer of sketching.com and that's kind of a yearly thing. You'll be doing it for your third year this year, but the main agenda is just to get outside and change your scenery and experiment. And I, yeah. I think that's a great way of also recharging to stay inspired. Exactly. And another thing is you might find that when you change your environment that your work will actually change. Not only will you show up and be, be productive, but you know you go to the park and all of a sudden you're sketching from nature uh, just because for me, I always feel compelled when I see something beautiful. I like to draw from life um, just to get warmed up. So that's just another way. I, I defi- Thanks for shouting out Summer of Sketching Project. Um, yeah, if you want to know more about that, check out summerofsketching.com. It's, it's a weekly challenge to make one sketch every week. Uh, but taking your sketchbook outside in the summer. I know that's tough for you guys who live near the equator, like in Texas, but <laughs> um, actually the Texas is not close to the equator at all. That's good. <laughs> it's, closer, it's, it's closer than Iowa or New York. Yeah, so that's true. <laughs> well, um, uh, shout out to my Texas friends. <laughs> yeah. Well, the next thing that you talked about that really helps you recharge is being active. Uh, I know you're big on skating. So what are some kind of things that uh, help you be active that also keep you inspired at the same time to create? Well, for one, this podcast, <laughs> Nice. Uh, I, I like to, to reach out or not to reach out. I like to, it, it goes back to varying your intake, but just finding things that stimulate you mentally, physically, spiritually, like you said, um, I've been recovering from an injury these past few months, so I haven't been able to be that physically active and it's, it's definitely taken a toll, but I've been trying to replace that with reading more books or um, having calls with friends that, you know, interesting conversations with people just keep me sharp. Um, now that I'm finally getting back into sports and exercising, I, I've really felt so much healthier. Um, I, I'm working on getting into some meditation and yoga as I've been stretching my leg, getting back from this injury. And it's just had such a profound effect. Well, that's why I was thinking you were probably the best, not probably, that's why you were the best person for me to talk about on this topic because, you know, I've dealt with a a surgery recently and it's kind of got me feeling off and you've been dealing with a crazy surgery in your leg that's had plenty of ups and downs. So the fact that you can push through it and find ways to recharge yourself or maintain that, that creative focus to pursue your personal work is huge. In conclusion, I want to kind of just recap everything that you and I just talked to, because I know we just gave the listeners a lot for them to chew on. The three ways, just to repeat the ways that you stay inspired. The first one was varying your intake, uh, making sure you're getting around more things that can inspire you outside of your normal routine. So if you're a hand lettering artist and all you follow is lettering artists, you know, maybe switch it up, follow some calligraphers, some kind of illustrators, photography. Uh, The second way that you had talked about was being around other creatives, which is more about getting within a community, establishing relationships, taking initiative, going to conferences, Also, things that you talked about was collaboration, getting into different workflows and learning from other people's processes. That was a huge key as well. Uh, The final one, the third one would be recharging, whether through it's a change of environment or being active, going outside, exercising, meditation, anything that's going to stimulate you mentally, physically, or spiritually. I think all three of those are great, and I think that's really going to benefit the audience. So thanks for taking the time to share those with us today, Eric. Yeah, man. No problem. My pleasure. Uh, Do you have any kind of final words that you would like to leave the audience with today? There's something I heard recently that kind of applies to this. And I believe it was from Andy Miller of Creative Pep Talk. He was talking about how 99% of the struggles we face are all in our head. And I think that's so true. And it's really like if if you think you're uninspired, you're going to stay uninspired. But if you want to be inspired, there's so many different ways to feel that, uh, to feel that come back. And I think if, if you, if you can get to the root of the struggle and just realize that a lot of it is, is just in your head, these, these techniques will help you, but really you're going to be able to help yourself. Yeah. I like how you say that, especially as Stephen Pressfield says, the best way to get through the resistance is just to do the work. 
But as you mentioned earlier, that's not always so simple. That's not always the case. So having a list of other ways to stimulate yourself mentally to get back to your creative roots on your personal projects, as you shared today, I think is yep. just a great other way, another perspective to look at things. So where could people go to find you online? Uh, you can follow me on Instagram. My handle is F dot. That's E F D O T. And my website where you can find all my uh, lettering and illustration work is F dot studio.com. So E F D O T studio.com. I appreciate you being on and thank you for your time. Yeah. Thanks so much, man. That was really fun. All right. If you want to find me online, you can find me at perspective-collective.com or you can find me on Instagram on my new account of Perspective Podcast. It's where I'm going to be posting the weekly episodes and the weekly, the artwork for each episode. If you want to give back to the show, the best way to do that is by going on iTunes, leaving a quick review. It takes just a couple minutes. It really helps the show get discovered. I'm not going to lie. It makes me feel like I have a purpose with what I'm doing. Or you can share the work with a friend through social media. And I need to give a big thank you for Nick Jenkins for all the theme music that you hear on this show. You can find his music online at soundcloud.com forward slash bluka. That's B-L-O-O-K-A-H. And as always, I just want to thank you for your time and lending me your ears. I just want to encourage you to keep showing up, keep putting in the work, and keep creating. You've got this.